Ocean acidity is increased by 30% since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. This increase is 100 times faster than any change in acidity experienced by marine organisms for at least the last 20 million years. How does eating animal products contribute to ocean acidification? Ocean acidification is a, it's a devastating problem, and it's being driven by pesticide runoff from our agricultural system, uh, among other things. And just to look at that for a second, we are mostly growing food for livestock. So a lot of the pesticides that are growing on our land are also going onto crops that are being fed to livestock. Therefore, if you eat less animal products, you are contributing to less of that agricultural overload and less pesticides on our croplands, which are going to end up in our waters. So that's one thing. Um, then ocean acidification is also being fueled in part by the, the, the climate crisis itself by the, the, the carbonization of our atmosphere, which in turn ends up in our waters and in our oceans. There too, by eating lower on the food chain, you take a bite out of climate change. There's a lot of steps we have to take to clean up our waters and our world so that we don't destroy our planet for future generations. Eating lower on the food chain is probably numero uno if you want to get started right away. While independent media outlets still exist, and there are a lot of them, the major outlets in the United States are almost all owned by just six conglomerates. How does this contribute to the amount of animal products that are eaten in the United States? One of the things that concerns me in the world today is that for all of the diversity of thought that we think we have with the internet, the reality is that there are a, some, a few established interests that um, are actually using the new technologies to assert more and more control over our thoughts and over the conversations that take place in our world. And this is somewhat chilling, but there's some very smart people that are paid a whole lot of money to control the conversation. And so we think we're free thinkers, and maybe we are, and hopefully we are, but a lot of times we're not as free as we really think we are. For example, the algorithms that Facebook or Google create uh, determine what we're exposed to, what shows up in our newsfeed, what conversations are happening. And so two human beings can literally Google the same thing, like climate change. And one will see I, I search uh, results collection that will focus a lot on stock prices of oil, for example. And another one will see stuff that's all about radical activism and rallies that are taking place. And these are two people that are Googling the exact same terms, but Google has learned what they're interested in and it follows, it keeps them in that rut, if you will. And so what concerns me is, yes, we think, well, we can choose between Fox and CNN and MSNBC and whatever, but the reality is that these are um, all uh, fundamentally subscribed to certain common narratives. And among those is that the modern industrialized food system is normal, and that the status quo is acceptable. And we argue all the time about who should pay for medical coverage. But we're not addressing the real issue, which is that it doesn't matter who pays for the medical coverage if we, no one can afford it. Because whether it goes through the government or it goes from private parties or it goes from companies, a million dollar operation is expensive. And at the end of the day, we're all paying for the pool of it one way or the other. And so the bottom line is, how do we cut down on this rampant, out of control medical spending, three and a half trillion dollars in the last year in the United States? How do we cut that down so that we're not having to fight about who pays for it because it's not going to bankrupt anybody? And that starts with prevention. And that starts with changing the food on our plates and our diet and lifestyle choices because the vast majority of our medical spending is on disease symptom management for chronic illness illnesses that are directly impacted by diet and lifestyle choices. So the, the modern media system is getting funding from the junk food industry through the ads that it receives. It's getting funding from the pharmaceutical industry. And all of these ad dollars are keeping the conversation within a certain narrow framework. Fortunately, you don't have to buy into it. You can open your mind and you can put what we're learning into action and change your life. Do fish grown on fish farms cause any health or environmental issues? Fish farms are growing rapidly. In fact, most of the fish eaten by humans today is coming from farms. And at one level, it makes sense because we're strip mining our oceans. 
and there are just simply aren't that many fish left in them. In fact, if current trends continue by the year 2050, we'll have more plastic in the oceans than we'll have fish. And uh, so more and more of the fish are getting plastic in their bodies, and that's making them sick. And then they're getting you know, overfished, which is causing another set of problems. And we have the acidification of our oceans, which is also throwing them off. We have warming oceans, which is throwing off the migratory patterns of the fish. All of this is creating some serious problems for marine life. So it makes sense that humans whose appetite for fish seems to only go up would want to create farms as another way of producing fish that doesn't have all those impacts and isn't dependent on a depleting resource. Unfortunately, fish farms generally exacerbate the problem even more because it takes fish to feed fish. So where is that fish coming from? Often from the oceans. And in a bizarre irony, we're finding that it takes about five pounds of fish to produce one pound of fish in, for example, salmon farming operations. So it hasn't really helped the oceans a whole lot because in many cases we're strip mining, maybe bycatch, maybe some of the less appealing fish for humans are getting fed into fish farms, but still we're depleting resources in the process. And when we sequester large amounts of fish in a small area, guess what? That water gets very polluted with their poop and disease can spread. So the industry's answer to this in many cases is to put antibiotics in the water so that the animals won't die while they're surrounded by disease, just like in our factory farms where we're feeding the livestock antibiotics. So um, salmon, for example, is also given pink food coloring into the water so that it will be pink because it's not being fed its natural diet. And if they didn't do that, farmed salmon would be gray, which is less appealing to the consumer. So it's not a very natural situation. There are some people who are trying to do fish farming better, more sustainably, more humanely more power to them. I mean, whether or not you choose to eat fish, I think we could all agree that a more humane and sustainable world is a step in the right direction for those who do. And at least that's my, my vantage point. But um, the bottom line is do not be deceived. The vast majority of fish farming out there is in an ecological and ethical disaster. And it's creating products that are fundamentally different from a health perspective than the wild ocean fish for consumers.